Do you have someone you hate? You know, someone you'd do anything to hurt? Pay any price for revenge? If so, you might want to consider visiting Lightless City. To get there, go to any decent sized city and find a deserted alleyway at night. Go into it, and close your eyes as tightly as you can. Whisper Lightless City, and concentrate on the darkness. You've probably noticed that there are faint colors and abstract shapes you can make out if you try to focus your eyes when they're closed. Watching those images go by, and after a few minutes, they'll start to get clearer, crisper, and brighter. When this happens, they'll start taking on detailed forms, images of violent murders, deformed animals, and similar things. No matter what you see, you need to keep your eyes closed. You'll begin to lose track of time, but eventually the images begin to stop. And you'll see nothing but pure darkness, nothing but deep black, no colors and no shapes. When you're certain that you see pure darkness, at that point, open your eyes. And you'll be in a very dark city. There won't be a single light or star in the sky. You should be able to see a faint, dark blue outline of the tall buildings surrounding you. Make your way out of the alley and walk as quietly as you can down that sidewalk, in any direction, doesn't matter. But if you hear any movement, run. Run as quickly as you can. Run away from the noise. Because there are animals in Lightless City. It's too dark to make out the details, but they're the size of large, wild felines, and will kill any human they can catch. Keep moving until you reach an area with smaller buildings otherwise known as the edge of the city. A child will approach you, his face dully glowing, letting you see that he is eyeless. He'll ask, will you share your light with me? Now at this point you gotta say yes. The child will reach for your face and rip out your right eye and it's going to be painful. I mean, come on, your eye's being ripped out. But there shouldn't be any bleeding or open wound. The child will thank you and leave. Keep walking though and a tall man will appear before you. Whose light do you wish to have taken away? Speak the name of the person you hate, and as soon as you say their name, they'll go completely and irreversibly blind. Is your hatred satisfied, the man will ask. If it is, say yes, and you'll awaken in the alley. If not, say no, and the man will disappear. Keep walking and you'll come across another eyeless child. Will you share your light with me? And you need to say yes, and your left eye will be torn out. And it should be painful, but it will leave you blind, of course. Keep walking, and the tall man will appear again. Although, you, of course, will have to rely on his voice. Whose life do you wish for the darkness to claim? At this point, you say the name of the one you hate, and they'll be dead. You will not be asked if your hatred is satisfied this time, and you will not be able to return to the alley. I told you to make sure you really hated someone before even doing this, so you're going to spend the rest of your life wandering around Lightless City, blind, with only your hatred to keep you warm. And you know what? For some people, that's just enough. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another ritual pasta on this channel. One of my favorite type of creepypastas. It often seems like my most favorite types are the ones that uh, deviate a little bit away from gaming. Although I do like the gaming ones. I really love the television, hidden video ones, uh, missing tapes, and especially the rituals. Now, ritual pastas can either be incredibly lengthy, or they can be really short like this one. And uh, recently we've come across shorter ones, but, you know, we can sort of analyze them a little longer instead of without going over the budget of the regular uh, video, I guess you could say. But Lightless City is uh, one of those stories that I definitely, definitely love for one reason only. For me, ritual pastas uh, need to have a clear risk and reward to it. A lot of the ones we do read don't really have that necessarily. A lot of them make you wonder, why the hell would you do this in the first place? Here, it's a little bit of a stretch, of course, most ritual pastas are stretches. This one, I highly doubt you're going to go to one of your uh, alleyways in any city and uh, close your eyes and magically be teleported to this demonic 
other side. Uh, heck, you know, maybe I could try in Toronto whenever I'm free or totally uh, not doing anything that day. Hey, maybe it might work. But in the story, you have to really hate someone in order to even go to Lightless City, and it proves itself towards the end. You can sort of pick it up about two-thirds of the way through when you realize one of the eyes eventually goes missing. And uh, when the option comes for the second eye to go away, that is pretty, pretty spooky. I mean, if I'm going to be totally honest with you, all right, when I got to that point where the uh, second kid was like, will you share your light with me? I then realized the actual risk to doing this. If you don't hate someone with all your heart, then you going out of your way to do this entire ritual, which by the way, once I would say it would be a pretty traumatizing experience if you actually went through with it and got teleported to such a location, that even by doing it, you go to some place and actually end up blind yourself. And for God's sake, you better hate someone completely or else you'll be stuck here forever with only your hatred to keep you warm. Sorry, that was a little bit of a cringy line, but I guess for some people that is quite enough. And for me, the story is enough. I mean, it's not, you know, again, terribly long. And of course, I do like reading shorter stories too. I don't have this uh, notion of a story needs to be like 10, 15 minutes long. No, I mean, if the story's good, the story's good, right? And I like reading these because, you know, in all honesty, this is an internet campfire story. And ritual pauses to me are some of the best internet campfire stories ever because it always makes you think of doing something like this later on. Heck, there are channels on YouTube exclusively dedicated to taking these ritual and putting them in an analytical right light, even going as far as to doing them out there. This is very uh, amazing. I don't, I don't have the exact name of the channel in my head right now. I should have wrote it down. But there is a very amazing channel that actually looks into some of these ritual passes, goes out of the way to do uh, something like the 11 miles ritual. Totally blanking out over here. But regardless, the entire uh, story over here, the entire aspect of ritual passes, really lead themselves well into what haunted gaming or creepy passes genuinely are. You want to sit these things. You, you want to sit these down, you want to read them, and you want to basically walk through your mind and say, could this actually occur? Now, of course, being a skeptic indiv individual myself, obviously the story doesn't seem to make any sense. You know, you're not going to go out and be teleported to Lightless City, okay? That's not going to happen. For anybody that lives near a major city or a moderately decent sized city, as a story would like to say, I don't think we'll be headed to a darker alternate version of our city and walk towards the edges where we'll see a child with no eye. I mean, in all honesty, this seems like a setup for an amazing indie horror game, if nothing else. But as far as obviously it happening, like any ritual pasta, 95% of them, which, you know, some of them do come across as uh, something legit uh, over here, 95% of it, I don't think anything is going to be happening to us. But as a story, is it interesting? Yes, it is. I would definitely like to see this being touched upon later on. I'd, I'd, I'd actually like to go out and try this, you know, if I have a free night. Obviously, as someone who knows it's not going to happen, it's just one of those things you go out and uh, do it just for the hell of it, right? Just to say you've done it, crossing it off your bucket list kind of thing. So, in all honesty, I'm going to ask you what you thought of Lightless City. Is it a story that you feel like, uh, you know, is it a ritual that honestly matches your risk-reward requirement? Because to me, it does. Going into something where you hate someone and being told you need to really hate someone or else, like the story proves it, it's going to bite you back in the ass. So let me know what you thought about this ritual pasta, I thought it was pretty decent, but as always I do like to hear about what you think in the comment section below, what would you rate this ritual, and would you actually do it if you had the time, or hey, do you even hate someone enough for you to go out and actually do this? I really hope not to that last question, but this has been another episode of Ritual Pastas. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, just like if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am...